Okay, guys, so that's the five minute break done. We're going to get to it now. I'm very excited, very, very excited. Uh, Dr. Nida is also here. Uh, Dr. Nida is going to be taking part in the session and she is going to simulate um, one of the scenarios so that we can see how it can be done in the eight minutes. Thank you very much for taking your time to do this, uh, Dr. Nida. Um, for the class, obviously, guys, let's talk about how to take a history of, say, acute coronary syndrome. I've got here um, some sketches, obviously, that UK Pass Academy, um, Dr. Sishan has been very working very hard to create them. He has made a fantastic visual representation of what you need to do for your different scenarios. We're doing cardiology today. Um, I'll be doing some of them. We'll take a lunch break and Dr. Zishan will finish with respiratory as well as hematology as well. Some of the leukemias are in there, multiple myelomas are in there. A TB is coming up. PCP is also coming up. Lots and lots of things to discuss. So I wanna quickly run through the approach and then we will have a simulation with Dr. Nida of this particular scenario. And we'll even make it telephone call, okay? So how do you take history? Again, it's chest pain. Tell me more, please listen. Do the Socrates. When you're doing your Socrates, we wanna know where the pain is, how it began, how long they've had it for, if it's sudden or gradual, and they will tell you the story and I'll share you the scenario in a second. You'll then describe the pain. You'll ask them to describe, does it come and go? And if it goes anywhere else, has the pain changed over time in any way? Anything that makes the pain worse or better? We give options. So when we say, does anything make it worse or better? And we're talking about chest pain, we want to know if it's related to positioning. Have you noticed anything that makes it worse, such as your positioning, leaning forward or anything like that? Have you noticed anything that makes it better? Scale the pain zero to 10. There's a question in here about pain relief. If the scenario is face to face, most definitely, you need to watch out for two things. Is the person in pain in front of you? Okay, no. Then perhaps you'll take your history and you'll ask them to describe the pain. Now, severe pain starts at eight. And usually pain management is according to the pain ladder. We start with paracetamol. We may need to replace it with an NSAID. We may need to add you know, cocodamol or a, co on, or a weak opiate. And obviously, if that doesn't work, we move to the opiates. And so generally, when you're explaining this to the patient, do the same thing. Tell your patient, okay, we'll start you with some pain relief and we'll try and control the pain. So the nurses usually will come and administer. And for chest pain, again, ask about GTN, if they've ever had any pain relief attempted. So what have you tried for the pain so far? And this is enough for you to know if they've tried any of the pain relief that is usual. For the differentials and the red flags, what are my red flags for chest pain? Sweating, MI, vomiting. For PEDVT, it's about leg pain and swelling, as well as coughing out blood. Sudden difficulty breathing is usually the mechanism of action and the way it presents for pulmonary embolism. And so when they told you it started suddenly, and now I'm asking about shortness of breath and difficulty breathing, the answer is yes. Any coughing? Have you traveled abroad recently? Do you have a fever? Ask about heartburn symptoms. Ask about rash. And again, for pericarditis, anything makes it worse, such as leaving, um, does anything uh, make it worse? Does anything make it better? And obviously you get the line down makes it worse. Leaning forward makes it better. And you can also get recent flu-like illness. And so you will prioritize these questions and then you will move on to your PMAFTOSA and your background history, including psychosocial. So here you signpost, right? I'd just like to know a bit more about your health to help you better. Ask about medications, ask about any known allergies, ask about a family history of heart problems or high blood pressure, ask about what they do for a living and cover diet, exercise, smoking and alcohol. So signpost. Thinking about your lifestyle, I just wanted to ask, can you tell me a bit more about your diet? Remember, by this time, if this was ongoing chest pain right now, you may need to have already taken some measures and then you will briefly walk through the diet, exercise, smoking and alcohol. 
don't just say, what do you eat? Instead, ask about the diet. Do you cook at home or do you eat out? And what kind of foods do you tend to eat? Exercise wise, do you manage to do any exercise? Are you active generally? Smoking, do you smoke? Have you ever smoked? If, if yes, how much do you smoke? How long have you been smoking? Yeah, how many cigarettes a day? Alcohol, do you drink alcohol? How much alcohol do you drink in a day? And so you need to know your units. And we'll talk about units later. So for your psychosocial and the effects of the symptoms, ask, can you tell me a bit, is, can you tell me a bit more about how this has affected your day-to-day -day life? Any problems at work, home, driving or hobbies or sleep? If it's an acute problem, just remember that right now is the problem. But if it's happened before, then obviously the effects, they count. Have you given any thought as to what could be causing your symptoms? Do you have any worries at the moment? Is there anything specific you were hoping we could do for you? Obviously, you're going to do these things as needed. And when we do the simulation, you will have a look and see how it can be done. For the examinations, usually you need to cover the observations. You need to look, listen, and feel the chest. You need to request an ECG and obviously heart markers, infection markers, and potentially also an X-ray for those who have shortness of breath or for those who have a serious problem. Explain the findings and give the diagnosis. Again, a heart attack. We explain the findings first. Thank you for allowing me to examine you. I had a look at your ECG and it showed that you have what's known as an ST elevation myocardial infarction. It's a heart attack, I'm afraid. It is a serious medical emergency. It's when blood supply to your heart is suddenly blocked. So this is usually caused by poor blood flow and clotting the majority of the time. Is that clear so far? We need to take emergency measures. Again, we're being patient-centered. Discuss the most important things first, urgent admission, hospital. So we need to send you to the hospital as soon as possible. Would that be all right? In the meantime, okay, we'll start you on treatment. We're following Mona, which is obviously the nitrates, GTN, morphine, aspirin, 300 milligrams are always given, oxygen as well, and monitoring. We discuss with the cardiologist the changes on the ECG, and they may suggest different types of treatment to open up your blood vessels. This is known as a percutaneous intervention. They will stent the blood vessels to increase blood flow to your heart and to pre hopefully prevent this from happening again. So they may repeat some investigations and they may start you on some blood thinners that you would then take home. Chunk and check, is that clear so far? Are we on the same page? Would you like me to repeat anything? Do you have any other questions or concerns? Is there anything else you were hoping we could do? Now, managing patients' issues means that as I was taking the history, I would have identified risk factors that increase the risks. I need to ask myself, what is left to do? And if there's space for advice, we definitely talk about the most important ones. Could be smoking, could be the, um, the alcohol drinking, could be the diet, could be the weight. Again, especially if this is not an emergency scenario, acute coronary syndrome in its essence okay, is an emergency. So you do have to pay attention to that and make sure you explained all of the next steps before you talk about anything else. Because they're going to the hospital, they already are a 999 situation. But again, ask them about driving and ask them about pain that's new and changing in the future. You may need to call 999 if this happens again. Leaflets and follow-ups. You will give them material to read about their condition. And in general, we can pick and choose the most important areas in our scenario. So we're just going to quickly do a simulation for that one. Dr. Nida. Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good as well. So let's have a look here. Uh, which scenario were you hoping to do? I was thinking a telephone call. Oh, that's fine. Is that all right? Yeah, that's, so, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Telephone call. Um, you need some information to confirm. So I'll just give it to you. Let's say um, I'm Tom Hardy. And my date of birth 
is 16th of June, 1954. So that makes me around 70 years old. All right. 74, 74, 84, 94, 2024, 2014. Yeah, 2024. Yeah, so 70 years old. First line of address is 64 Finsbury Avenue. M14 for ET. You have that paper to confirm. It's going to be a telephone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me find the timer. Enter the room. Begin. Um, hello. Hello. Um, this is Dr. Zara. I'm, I'm talking from the hospital. Uh, um, uh, can I talk to Tom Hardy, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Um... Yeah, uh, Tom Hardy, I, I see that you book an appointment. Could you please confirm? Yeah, yeah are you all right? Oh, I, doctor, I woke up this morning. I'm, I, I was feeling all dizzy, cold and, and clammy. Uh, don't worry, um, Tom, just let me uh, have some details. Like, can I confirm your date of birth, please? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, It's uh, 16th of June, uh, 1994, 1954. All right. And your first line of address quickly, please. Uh, 64 Finsbury Avenue, uh, M144 TE. All right. So you were talking like you are feeling dizzy, cold and calm. calm me. Like, can yeah. you tell me when? Um, since the morning, I woke up and I was feeling like this as well. And I've got this, this chest pain as well. All right. I'll just ask you some questions quickly. Don't uh, don't worry. All right. I'm on the call yeah. with you. So um, so you mentioned that. And any change since morning in the symptoms? Um, no, it's just getting worse. All right. Anything that makes it better or worse? N nothing, nothing. I tried paracetamol. It's not going away. All right. And um, do you feel like any pal palpitations? Uh, you could say that, yeah. All right, okay. And since when did you notice them? The, the, since the morning as well. It's just, it's all over the place. All right, all right. Uh, don't worry. And any, any sweatings in the palm? Yeah, definitely, doctor, yeah. All right, okay. Any fever, Tom? Um, I, I don't have a fever, no. All right. Any chest pain? Uh, no, no, doctor. Uh, no. Yeah, I've got it here. I've got the chest pain. All right. Okay. And where exactly you have the chest pain? In the left? center of my chest. Center. Right. Is it going anywhere? Yeah, it's going to my neck and stuff. All right. Okay. Okay. And have you taken any painkiller? Uh, I tried paracetamol, doctor. Okay. Okay. And are you feeling tired? Uh, no, no. It's the first time, Tom, you're having this pain. Yeah, it's the first time. I, I don't know what's going on. All right. Okay. Don't worry. Or oh, don't worry. Just a few more questions, and I'll definitely help you. All right. Don't worry. Okay. Um, can you tell me, like, do you have any medical condition, like any heart? Uh, no, I've got no medical conditions. No blood pressure. N no, nothing like no. that. Any long-term medications if you're taking? Uh, no. No. Any allergies? Uh, no, doctor. May I know, Tom? Whom do you live with? Uh, I live alone. All right. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Tom, before I ask you further questions, um, from your history, um, it, it looks like that you are having a heart attack. Are you following me? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. worried about that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Tom, what I want you to do is that uh, please sit in an upright position. Okay. All right? Just keep sitting in that position and please don't drop my call, but dial triple nine. Dial them, yeah, call for the ambulance. So you need to go to the hospital right now. Okay, should I hang up? Yeah, no, no, just uh, hold me, put me on the hold. I'm there and you okay. have to keep talking to me until the ambulance arrives. Okay, can you call them for me? Um, can you make the call? If you can't, I can do that for yeah, you. Yeah, okay, uh, it's just, yeah, okay, fine, I'll call them. All right. Okay. Just tell them your address and tell them that you are on the call with the GP. Do I do I really need to go to the hospital? Uh, well, yes. Um, according to your, you know, the symptoms you are having, we really need to investigate them. All right, and we have to act on them as soon as possible. What are they going to do? 
dorms, so they are going to do some investigations. As I'm uh, suspecting a heart attack, they're going to take your blood for the cardiac markers, you know, and they will also take some routine investigations. Um, they will also do an ECG for you to check, you know, what's going on exactly with your heart, okay. and they will do a chest X-ray. So okay. Actually, the the heart specialist team is going to see you, Tom. Okay. So you don't want to miss anything, right? All right. Do you want to call someone to be with you there, or you want me to? No one. I live alone. All right. Don't worry about that, Tom. Uh, the ambulance will be here soon. Any other questions that are going in your mind? Is okay. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know. It's it's fine. But what are you going to do for me at the hospital? Are they just going to give me medications? Uh, yeah, so Tom, they will start you on a treatment, all right? They will give you oxygen, some painkillers as you are in the pain. And, you know, they are going to give you some nitrates. Um, now, Tom, this, these so, uh, medications will el ha actually help you to feel better, okay. all right? Depending on, you know, the uh, time since you are having these symptoms, they can offer you further specialist treatment, all right? The seniors, the best people will be there to help you out, all okay. right? Okay. Tom, just a few more questions, if you are all right to talk. Yeah. So, Tom, can you just uh, quickly tell me, like, do you cook at home or do you go out? Yeah, I, I, I cook at home. Oh, that's really nice. So, um, apart from that, do you exercise, Tom? Um, I don't really find time. I, I, I'm getting old, so. All right, that's understandable. Um, and what about smoking? Do you smoke? Um, no, I don't smoke. No, right. That's good. And what about alcohol? Do you drink alcohol? Uh, I, I drink quite a lot, yeah. Uh, can you tell me, like, um, how much in a day? About, about a bottle of wine a day. And since, for how long? The, for, for the last six months. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, so oh. don't worry, Tom. Do you have any other questions until the ambulance arises? Okay, arrives? So that will be time over. Uh, I'm sorry, my... Uh... I think my ears touched the app, so I wasn't able to keep track of time. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that, that would be about eight minutes there. So I think you did the right thing, firstly, with uh, making sure you called the ambulance. I think you can go as far as to take control and call the ambulance yourself. All um, right. So tell them to stay on the line. We'll arrange for an ambulance to come. You could be having a heart attack, um, and I'm really concerned. Um, and then obviously, since you're on the line until the, that, I just want to make sure that you're okay and I keep an eye on you. I'd also like to keep asking you some questions so that I can note it down and make sure we can help you in the best way. And then you start taking the rest of your history after you've called and arranged for the ambulance. So this is task prioritization, guys. Again, I think Dr. Nida, um, perhaps make sure you just ask all of the questions. Don't skip things like family history in there. Um, I could have had a uh, family history. <laughs> oh, oh did, I didn't ask. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was like- uh, Yes, I could have had a family history. Yes. Now, does, what, what does it mean if I've got a family history? Well, if I've got a family history, it means that my risks are made aware to the doctor. Did it change your management? No. So when you're looking at a scenario like this and you need to mark as an examiner, you would ask yourself, was this a safe consultation? You recognize the heart attack, definitely. And so you actually get a lot of management marks. You even explained what's going to happen, sit upright and continue um, to be on the phone and we'll call the ambulance. If there's anything for me that would concern me as an examiner is that I want you to actually be the one who takes control and calls the ambulance and not oh, yeah. allow it to be the patient. So there you may be told, you know, that's not safe. Um, and so that could cost you more than maybe forgetting a piece of history, which would cost you maybe one day to gather in mark. Um, but again, fantastically done. Um, we confirmed a few things in there and we definitely um, did the station. I think it's a pass overall, but, you know, again, let's make sure that we follow the uh, the structure. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, no, I, I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. I think I'm going to be doing a, um, the next scenario myself and, you know, I, we'll see how it goes because uh, it's important people see a non-rehearsed straight out of the bat you know, consultation um, and everybody who's doing their practice is going to straight out of the bat, just do their consultation and try and get better over time. And yeah, so I think that covers, you know, acute coronary syndrome. Just a couple of things to share with you guys then that means in terms of the scenarios themselves. So if you would just give me a second to prepare that, there's different scenarios you can find. I'm going to cover the MI, the acute coronary syndrome and 
uh, chest pain as well in general. So let me share my screen in a second. Over here for your general cardiology, uh, some of your cardiology cases that we'll be doing 